Hi, I'm Pete Scully. I'm the engineer on Tower 18, and this is Fleet Friday. Special fire, what is the address of the emergency? What's on fire? Reporting planes coming from the roof. LPD's arriving on scene, stating fire in the stairwells as well. Callers, complaints seen coming out of the unit. Hustle party trapped. If there's an older lady that lives there, she's not seen. Right, medium-sized, two-story, multi-family. We have a smoke complaint showing up. Alpha side. I'll be assuming command. Remain the offensive strategy. We do have extension to the second floor. Headed to the third. Let's go ahead and start a second alarm. 334, Cal 35. All right, this is called our bumper line or trash line. We use this uh, smaller hand line to put out smaller fires, like a dumpster fire. Uh, it's only 100 feet, a little bit shorter than the rest of our pre-connected hand lines. Pretty versatile line and a quick deployed line. So this truck has an interesting story and an interesting nickname. The nickname is Sully18. Um, while driving to a call, uh, going to a fire actually one time, uh, a goose flew up into the air and hit the front windshield and shattered the entire front windshield. Uh, unfortunately, it died, but we have a sticker here to remember that goose. Driver's seat, we have a lot of different controls for the uh, engineer. The engineer's in charge of uh, putting up the aerial device. Which um, the controls to start that process are on the dashboard here um, with all these other buttons. You'll also see a pump shift knob. This truck is also equipped with a pump to pump water and its own water supply. Uh, the back of the cab is for the firefighters. We have two firefighters on board, the officer and the engineer, so four total. Each has their own air pack built into the seat so they can rapidly get off the truck when they get to a scene. Um, and then they have a bunch of other equipment such as gas monitors, elevator keys for elevator rescues, and um, several different tools in a roll-up compartment back here. As I said, this truck's equipped with a pump. This has a 2,000 gallon per minute pump. Um, we have 300 gallons of water on this truck, and these are all the controls to control that um, process of filling all the hose with water and bringing water into the truck from a fire hydrant and uh, spraying it out of the tower or any of these hand lines. We have three pre-connected hand lines on this tower. Um, we have two inch and three quarter hand lines that are 200 feet long. They flow 160 gallons per minute. Uh, we have one two and a half inch hand line, um, also 200 feet long. We have a generator on this rig to power our huge fans to uh, push smoke out of buildings and also to power any other electrical equipment we might have on the truck. Uh, we have this pull out step, which is uh, really designed for on aerial devices, if we're flowing water and we're close to electrical lines or there's an electrical hazard, if the aerial were to come in contact with this truck, you could be doing all of your pumping operations from a safe area off the ground so that you're not grounded and you don't get electrocuted. Uh, in this compartment, we have a hazmat kit for plug and dike. So if there's ever a leak with a cylinder or a truck carrying hazardous materials, we can plug that leak quickly. Um, we have a set of cones for traffic accidents. Behind here we have our breaker panel. Um, that goes with the generator. If we ever blow a breaker, then we can come over here and turn it on or turn it off. All right, this is the engineer compartment. Uh, this is where I store my gear. I have it all ready to go for whenever we get a call. Um, in here I have a lot of other appliances and adapters. So if we need to make a, a hand line longer, we can use all of these different adapters. If we need to switch out a nozzle because it broke, we can switch it out rapidly. Um, we also have on this truck, which is unique to uh, this rear mount tower on South Metro Fire, um, we have a set of Paratech struts. These struts are basically used for stabilizing vehicles that are on their side or upside down in a precarious position where it might tip over. Um, these struts are also rated to 20,000 pounds so they can secure or stabilize a building if there's a building collapse or a car through a building, anything like that. On the back side, we have all the plates that these struts go into, so they all integrate together to make a nice solid system to shore up any building or any vehicles that are on their side. In this hatch right here, we have what's called diesel exhaust fluid. 
Um, all of our new trucks have emissions standards, just the same as any other diesel, ve diesel vehicle on the road. Um, this is where we put in our DEF. Um, in this compartment, we have, first of all, these two bags right here. We call them our strut bags. These bags deploy with our Paratech struts that I just showed you. They have different tips and heads to integrate into any type of material, whether it's the bottom of a car or a house. Um, they have straps in there, and then they have chain cluster hooks also to integrate into the bottom of a car or a vehicle um, so that you can attach those struts to the vehicle. Here we have our, this is called the man versus machine kit. It's also a unique item to Tower 18. In here we have a full complement of tools. If anyone um, gets entangled in any type of machinery, um, fingers in grinders or anything like that, we can disassemble a lot of those different machines. Um, some of the unique stuff that we have on here is unique because uh, this was purchased by Littleton Fire prior to the South Metro merged. So the truck was designed for a little bit different equipment. So we have specific equipment. Um, this is our airbag box. Uh, we can go over this when we go over the airbags. I'll just bring it over there, but you can show them where that is. So the airbag box lives in this compartment. On this top shelf, we have a lot of different equipment. Um, we have a ring remover bag, so a lot of times people get rings stuck on their fingers. Um, we have the equipment in here to remove those off of their hands. Um, this bar right here uh, we use a lot when we're going on medical calls if someone's unconscious or unable to get to a door and the door is locked. This has got a bottle jack on the end of this bar and it will push the door open so that we can open the door and get past the lock without doing any damage to the house. When we're done with the call, we can then secure the door. No, no harm, no foul. Um, this big pipe right here is for our Bresnan nozzle. And the Bresnan nozzle. The Bresnan nozzle lives here. It's an adapter used for sometimes basement fires or confined space areas. Um, the water streams shoot out here in a huge pattern, um, cover the entire surface area if we can't get into the tight confined space. Um, we have a life jacket with water rescue rope. Um, this is for when we have an ice rescue or um, any water rescue and we're first on scene, we, we rapidly get our first firefighter out with a life jacket and a rope bag. Um, meantime, we're, the rest of the crew will be going up top to get the rest of the uh, life safety equipment for our members but this is so we can rapidly get somebody at least down there, get eyes on the patient, make sure that we have a game plan. We're starting to figure out how to take care of this person that's stuck in the river or on the ice. Um, a big scoop shovel, we use that for hazmat sometimes to shovel up uh, oil dry or dirt, make um, some dams or diversions to uh, contain substances that are on the ground. Uh, the Mustang suit, which is an ice rescue suit, insulated suit, uh, so we can put a firefighter in this to go rescue someone in the ice um, or a dog. We have a pre-rigged rope system here. It's 200 feet. It's a three to one pulley system that's set up um, with some mechanical advantage. Just a rapidly deployable uh, rope. If we have a low angle type of rescue, we can um, get this off the rig and in service within a matter of minutes. Um, and this compartment is uh, air bottles, spare air bottles for our SCBA packs. So breathing air. We have one, two, and we have a hidden compartment underneath here with an additional bottle in the wheel well. We also have a water can for the firefighter on this side to use um, for any small type fires, trash fires in a house, anything like that. This compartment has all of our cribbing. Uh, cribbing is used for uh, setting up a stable platform if we're going to use airbags to lift. So ideally, we'd like to pull out some of this cribbing, um, build up a nice stable platform, set an airbag on there, and then lift. We can also use this if there is a vehicle on its side or on its roof, or a building that's been damaged. We'll build up a, basically a temporary wall to stabilize whether it's a vehicle or a house. Um, we'll build that little wall out of all this cribbing right This is where we put in all of our diesel fuel. This truck holds 80 gallons of diesel fuel. This is another spare air bottle for our air packs. These are two air tanks. Um, this air runs on these lines all the way up our 105 foot aerial up to the top of the bucket. So if the firefighters are standing in the bucket doing work for long periods of time, they can use this air rather than using the air on their backs, which is only about 45 minutes. In this compartment, we have all of our extrication equipment. 
again unique to this tower on South, South Metro Fire. Um, Littleton had purchased Hearst battery operated extrication equipment. We have a 32 inch extrication spreader. We have a cutter. We have a ram. Um, we have a unique tool called the strong arm. Uh, this is to get into residential doors. So again, if someone's unconscious or unable to get to a door, we can use this tip right here to spread the door open. Uh, extra batteries. We have a chain package here if we need to do any lifting or uh, stabilizing with chains. Uh, we have a sawzall right here. Battery operated sawzall. Um, great tool for extrication. We like to use it a lot. And then different uh, cords and everything. So if any of these batteries were to die and run out of power, which they typically last 30 minutes of full cut time, we have a cord right here. Plug it into our generator and we can have all time running tools as if the battery never died. These are our stabilizer pads. So when we set the aerial up and we bring out our stabilizer jacks, which are in these silver areas right here, the pads or the stabilizers will sit on these pads. These pads disperse the weight of the truck so that you don't have all the weight coming down on one point and breaking concrete or asphalt, anything like that. On the rear of the truck, this is our stabilizer control. Um, so right here is the control remote to be able to put out all four stabilizers to stabilize the truck before we use the aerial ladder. In our ladder compartment, this aerial is equipped with a 20 foot straight ladder, a 16 foot straight ladder, a 28 foot extension ladder, a 35 foot extension ladder, a 14 foot extension ladder, and a 10 foot folding attic ladder. Uh, we also have a Halligan for the firefighter to use. Uh, readily accessible to grab when they come and grab their ladder package um, and multiple different hooks uh, for pulling ceiling doing overhaul type of work um, this is a wildland hose package we don't typically get deployed on wildland calls uh, with south metro fire but in the event we were to arrive on scene first to one of those fires we can pull this hose out connect it to our pump panel and get to work on a wildland fire on this truck we have two anchors off of the back so one and two these anchors we'll use often uh, when we're doing a high angle rope rescue. Um, sometimes we will use the aerial ladder itself um, and we'll run the anchors through these two anchors right here. Uh, this is the rear intake for this fire truck. Um, this intake goes all the way up into the water piping of our aerial device. So a fire engine could supply us with water and then they would pump all the water up out of our aerial device through this. Um, connection right here. The aerial drain door, um, it's, it's just an, a valve to open up to dump any water from the aerial waterway. So if we flow water up top through the aerial, we need to evacuate that water to make sure that none of that water compresses when we uh, put the aerial back into its cradle. On this truck, we have 800 feet of five inch. Five inch hose is the hose that we use to connect to a fire hydrant. So it's this larger diameter hose. Um, so this is set up so the firefighter can pull it out. When they go to the fire hydrant, just like any other fire engine, they'll bring this hydrant bag, which has all the different adapters for different fire hydrants and any other valves that we might need to use. In this compartment, we have some scene lights. So these lights would hook up to our generator that we talked about earlier. Um, with different uh, cords in it and extension cords. We have a battery powered scene light as well. If we don't have access or we're too far away from the truck to use the generator. Um, some utility rope and some uh, tarps. We use these tarps to cover up furniture and protect uh, valuable items in a home. Uh, once we've gotten the fire under control and we're spraying water and pulling ceiling, we don't want to damage any of their materials. Behind this hatch door is all of our emergency controls for the aerial device. In the event um, this truck is not working appropriately and the hydraulics are no longer working, we can use some of these controls to overcome that. So if the aerial is stuck vertically in the air and we no longer have the 
normal controls, we can come down to some of these panels and operate the truck to get it down safely. This is the Station 18 logo. Um, this was designed when uh, this truck was part of Littleton Fire Rescue. Um, just a few unique things on here. We have the 18, the brush truck, which we also have a brush truck here. We are a wildland station. Um, the tower and the medic unit. We're missing the safety truck that's also stationed here. Uh, the Cougar right here, uh, we do protect Wildcat Ridge and Wildcat Parkway. And uh, back in the day when the station was first built, there were bobcats running around the neighborhood. Um, down here we have some Gaelic writing. The Gaelic writing means uh, better to be safe than sorry, just to encourage our uh, community to call us if they ever need us. Uh, this is our saw compartment. We have two uh, circular saw K-12s, um, one with a wood bit with a carbide tip. And this is a multi-purpose bit, so we can cut through masonry, metal, um, just about anything with this, with this uh, blade right here. We also have a chainsaw, which also has a carbide bit. Um, this is for cutting roofs, um, anything that we might be able to cut, whether it's buildings to make a window bigger, uh, anything we come across, this chain is pretty burly and is going to be able to get us through most materials. Um, some more covers right here if we need to cover up any furniture or any valuable items, just like the tarps. Uh, the two more outrigger pads for this side of the truck with outriggers. Another additional breathing air bottle. This is called our RIT pack. Uh, this pack is designed for firefighter rescue. If a firefighter ever goes down or is trapped into a building, um, this is the pack with all of the equipment that we would need to rescue them. So there's an extra air bottle if they were to run out of air. There's an extra mask if their mask were to have failed. There's an extra regulator if their regulator, which clips into their mask, would have failed. So if they ran into any type of problem like that, this is the gear that's going to help uh, buy us time to get them out of a building. We also have a rope on here. And we use that rope for our own orientation, so we'll uh, secure it outside of the building. And that way, if anyone else needs to come in and help us, they'll be able to just quickly follow the rope and get to us much faster than having to search through a building to find out where we are. In this compartment, we have a dry chem extinguisher. Um, we also have a water can, another water extinguisher. Uh, the reason we have one of each is different burning materials require different um, extinguishing elements. So. If we have a metal fire or an electrical fire, we'd like to use the dry cam rather than the water. Um, we have two one hour bottles for our airbags. The other one is underneath this secret compartment again. All right, uh, firefighter tool board in here. Um, we have multiple different tools for forcible entry. So any type of locks that we might encounter on a building, whether it's a commercial building or a house, we have lots of different tools in here to be able to defeat any of those locks and get us in quickly. On the back side of this board, we have our airbag complement. So we have traditional airbags over here, which most of the other fire trucks on South Metro have. And then we have this unique airbag here. Um, this is called the Maxi Lift airbag. Um, it goes up to 25 inches of lift and 31 tons of weight pretty strong airbag and it goes very tall. So we like to use this, this is kind of our go-to airbag that we have on this truck. For the airbags, as I showed you earlier, we had the airbag control box. So we'd always bring this box when we uh, deploy our airbags. And in here we have multiple different hoses so we can run multiple different airbags at the same time. We have our dead man control valve. We have different valves here to stop air from going in or out of the airbags. And then our pressure um, gauge right there. The dead man control valve, uh, this is the controller to lift the airbag and to lower the airbag. Uh, this regulates the pressure so that we don't overpressurize a bag. Uh, just another spare air bottle for our air packs here. The officer's compartment, this is all the officer's bunker gear, protective equipment. We also have a really large fan. As I mentioned earlier, we'll use this in conjunction with our generator. Um, to clear out smoke out of a large building. Um, this is an electronic fan that we use off our generator. Uh, number one reason is that we don't want to add CO into a building. If the building's full of CO already from the burning debris. Uh, this eliminates that factor. This is just another piece of equipment that we might use in conjunction with our airbags for, to keep the uh, surface nice and stable and level. Uh, on this truck, we have wheel chocks as well on both sides of the truck. Pretty large 
wheel chocks and we'll throw them right in front of the tire to make sure that the tire or that the truck doesn't roll away on accident. Okay, this is the opposite side of the engineer's uh, pump panel. So again, we have another intake so we can bring water in from a fire hydrant into the fire truck. And then these are also discharges. So if we needed to, we could add more hose and uh, set up more hose lines to spray more water if needed. On this side, we also have the access with the nozzles for this Charlie seat firefighter to rapidly deploy this hand line to the fire. This is the uh, cord box from our generator. It's 200 feet long and has four different connections on each side. So we can plug in uh, multiple different electronic tools off of our generator. Behind these doors are just access to different maintenance um, equipment items. So we have a, like hydraulic pump, uh, sight glasses down here. We can see all the pump housing and valves if we ever need to check any of that. Um, water strainers. So it's just access for engineers and um, the fleet maintenance guys to be able to get to all this piping that's behind these doors. This vertical compartment has a bunch of different hand tools such as a broom, some shovels. There's a dog snare back there. So when we do an ice rescue with a dog, we'll bring a dog snare just like a dog catcher would have to try and get that dog closer to us without us falling into the hole. Uh, there's a squeegee in here if we ever have water problems, say in a basement or in a big hotel. And then we have another large hook right here. This is the Charlie firefighter seat. Um, this, this is the seat right behind the fire officer up front. Again, they have all of their equipment. They have their air pack readily available so they can get off the truck quickly and go to the call. This is the officer seat. Um, he has this MDT right here. The MDT is a modal da mobile data terminal. Um, it's basically like a big GPS like your family might have in your car, but it also gives us a lot of notes on what type of call that we're going to dispatch um, regularly adds to those notes to keep us informed on what we're responding to. Um, this is what we call a TIC, a thermal imaging camera. We have two on this truck. Um, this is what this is the one the officer will use and basically this is a very sensitive camera um, that can heat, can sense heat through walls, through floors, through ceilings so we can find any fire in a void space or somewhere that the human eye might not be able to see. Um, on this truck we uh, label all of our firefighter positions on the truck. Uh, starting with the officer who's the alpha position, the engineer is the bravo position, the firefighter behind the officer is the charlie position, and the firefighter behind the delta or behind the engineer seat is the delta position. Uh, we label that for a few reasons just so that we can clearly talk to each other on the radio, um, but also on the fire trucks, on the tower specifically, we will split into two different crews so we can accomplish more things on a fire scene. So the way we do it here is uh, we split into the alpha team, Alpha team includes the officer and the Charlie firefighter and the Bravo team, which includes the engineer and the Delta firefighter. Uh, so if the Bravo team gets to a fire and we do decide to split our crew, typically the way we'll run it is the Bravo team is in charge of outside functions. And by outside functions, I mean, we're going to throw ladders, ground ladders to the building to make it safe for occupants to get out of the building and also our firefighters to get out of the building. We're going to size up the building to see if there's any other hazards that have been missed. We're typically going to try and address the uh, utilities on the building, which is shutting off the gas and shutting off power to the house. Um, and then we'll evaluate the rest of the building for any other needs, whether we need to get on the roof to do vertical ventilation or ventilate any of the backside of the building that people haven't been to yet. The alpha team would typically go into the building and begin a search for victims, search for life and search for fire. So they will marry up, make forcible entry on the door or complete forcible entry on the door. Um, once the forcible entry is done, they will begin searching for victims, especially if we have any known victims with a specific location, they'll head directly to that. All right, this is how we access the aerial. Um, like I said, this is a 105 foot aerial. Um, pull the step down and we'll go check it out. These are the controls for the aerial device. So all these joysticks are going to control this whole ladder from coming up and out of the cradle and being able to extend or move left and right or go higher or lower. These are those controls. We also have controls for um, the nozzle, which is at the end of the tower. Um, this allows us to be able to work remotely while spraying water and not have to be 
uh, necessarily in the collapse zone of a building or in the smoke and hazardous atmosphere of the building from the burning debris. Um, on this screen, this is a computer screen that will give me a lot of information about the truck as we're operating the aerial device. It tells me how level we are front to back or left to right. It tells me how far extended my aerial is, it tells me the different angles that we're at, and a lot of good information off that screen. All right, uh, this truck is three flies. We call it three flies because there's three different sections of this truck. Uh, this bottom one does not move. This one will extend and then this one will extend past that till we get an overall length of 105 feet off of the ground. That includes the height of the truck. All right, attached to the aerial, we have a 16 foot straight ladder. This ladder's up here so that we can exit the bucket onto a roof if need be. Also attached is our eight foot New York hook. Again, if we need to do any work from the bucket onto the roof to push roof material through, sound a roof, anything like that, we have a tool up here already so we don't have to bring that up with us. So up here we have the same exact controls that you saw down on the pedestal. The same joysticks, the same computer screen, the same nozzle controls, um, mirrors each other almost exactly. We have a couple of connections here to plug in power tools off of our generator. We have anchor attachments for the firefighters to secure themselves so that they stay safe and don't fall out of the truck. We have attachments here for the breathing air system that we showed you earlier out of those big tanks off of the back. This is for firefighters to clip into and then they can breathe off of the house air. Oh, we have a hand tool right here. It's called a pig. We have a bucket here with different nozzles for the end of the aerial. Um, safety straps, if we ever needed to use a safety strap while exiting this uh, bucket on a roof or a steep surface or slippery surface. Um, this is interesting, we have a Kestrel up here which will tell us wind speeds because these trucks are limited to um, how much wind we can have while operating an aerial up in the air. In here we have our ladder belts, so these are just um, basic harnesses to secure firefighters on these anchors if need be. We call this a saw scabbard. Um, lots of times if we're gonna be doing roof work from the bucket, we're gonna bring our saw up here and we can put our saw in vertically, the power head out and keep it out of our way so we have all this space for the rest of our gear and equipment. This is called the Pierce Life Bracket. Um, it accomplishes three different things. You'll see this big scoop right here. This is where we'll put our Stokes basket if we have a rescue, say a construction worker or somebody on an elevated surface that's injured or sick. We can package them in the Stokes basket. We'll lay it right here and we'll strap them in and then they have a nice stable platform to get back down to the ground. Um, we can also stand here and provide patient care uh, while we're taking them back down to the ground. Um, this right here is how we will attach that ladder that I showed you um, to get off of the truck and onto a big roof. Um, this will go through one of the rungs to secure that ladder uh, into place so that it won't fall or walk away on us. And then there's two anchor points, one on each side for any ropes or any anchor needs that we might have. Um, this speaker up here is a, a live speaker so that at any time I can communicate with the person who's down at the pedestal. Um, it's always open so you just start talking as if you were uh, talking to each other face to face. Okay, uh, this is the nozzle complement on the front of the tower bucket. Um, on this nozzle specifically, we can flow up to 1,600 gallons per minute. Um, we can go higher or lower depending on what type of fire we have. Uh, and then all these different connections are so that we can bring extra hose up with us and make a new hand line into a building or onto a roof. Um, so if the normal systems of the building are not working, we can make it outside and build it from our tower. Yeah, this camera is... Uh, a live feed into the pedestal where the controls are on the back of the truck so that the engineer if they're operating by themselves can get a global overview of where they're spraying water or uh, when they're getting close to a building. Uh, so we have two scene lights on the bottom um, so when the aerial's up in the air it can really illuminate the rest of the scene. We have two anchors here 500 pounds each. This is what we'll use for high angle rescues if we're using the bucket as an anchor point point. Um, and then we have this sprinkler valve right here and what we'll use that for is that if this uh, bucket is over burning debris or burning building and the temperatures are getting too hot there's a lot of electronics under here and to protect those electronics we'll open up that sprinkler and it looks like a shower drain almost 
and it just sprays a curtain of water to protect the bucket and the firefighters that might be in the bucket until we can get them out of harm's way. All right, this is where we keep our Stokes basket. So like I said, if there's ever an injured party um, at a high angle or a low angle type of rescue, um, we'll package them into this Stokes basket is what we call it with a backboard. Um, and we'll strap them in with a harness and uh, different straps to make sure that they're secure. And we can either lift them with a rope system or we can put them on the bracket that we talked about in the front bucket. In our top dunnage up here, we have our rope rescue equipment. Um, so we have two rope bags and two gear bags. So we can set up a safety rope and the main rope to do any lifting. Uh, this truck's equipped to do high angle rescue and low angle rescue, uh, typically used with the Stokes basket that we showed you earlier. In the rear dunnage, uh, as we talked about earlier, we have the rest of our water rescue equipment. So we have throw bags, PFDs or life jackets and helmets for all the firefighters on the apparatus. We also have wildland equipment right here, which is uh, helmets, fire shelters, anything you might need for a wildland fire. We have a fire decon bucket, which is a bucket full of different cleaning items for us to clean ourselves off after a fire to get all the carcinogens off of our skin before we get back into the truck. And then we have a water key in here, which is um, used to turn off water mains out in the street or in your front yard if there's ever a pipe burst in your house. The step of this aerial are all the emergency controls, uh, similar to what we talked about earlier. If there is a power failure, we can use all these controls underneath here to operate the aerial and get it down safely so we can leave the scene.